Hello my soccer universe. Well, as a Milan fan, this was a pretty rough week. Uh, nothing really, really bad happened, but you know, two uh, games that really didn't reflect uh, the performances on the field. Although, you may say that, and I probably would agree with it, that the Torino game, um, if you take it seriously, you win against to, to, to Torino, Ultimately, you did too, too little, you didn't take it seriously, and so um, with Torino winning, yeah, okay, has happened. Uh, it's more the Roma game on Sunday that still bugs me, because that was blind robbery, and yes, I'm sitting here with Roma, but only because they won in the cup, and I didn't want to put on the Uber shirt not to jinx tonight's big clash, which is the reason why I'm doing this uh, video right now. It was also a week where, you know, uh, we saw quite a few comebacks. The 2-0 lead in Italy is essentially dead with Lazio and Milan giving up 2-0 leads. Also in the cup, uh, we had quite, we almost had an upset uh, when Parma went to the San Siro and took uh, Inter to overtime only to lose uh, then there and then uh, Torino going to the San Siro a day later. Yes, the pitch in the San Siro will be really, really bad very soon. Uh, on to oust uh, Milan against the run of play, if you want to say. Although I think Torino, again, played rather well. However, uh, the past weekend was all about one man, or I should say the memory of a man. I did a video, of course, uh, where I mentioned it when I unpacked my uh, new 96 Italy shirt. Um, Gianluca Vialli, who had passed away. And I have to say... He was, of course, I have the Sampdoria shirt back there. This is the team that he was most associated with. But he, of course, he was also very much associated with uh, Juventus being the last captain, a Juve captain, to lift the Champions League trophy. And, you know, uh, the, I saw a tweet that, that shows the greatness of uh, Gianluca Vialli. Before Gianluca Vialli, Cremonese never played in Serie A. Sampdoria never won a European title or had not won a Serie A title. Before that, uh, Juve had a nine-year non-Scudetto uh, not winning streak and also had only one European Cup win since he left. He never ever, Juve has had, had won the Champions League trophy. And the same thing goes for Chelsea. When he arrived to Chelsea, suddenly the trophies came piling in, the European ones. So he's very, very much at the forefront. And I have to say, um, in my early years as a football fan, uh, while he was, I knew him from um, the Italian 90, where he played a very, very minor role, unfortunately, because Toto Scilacci uh, usurped him. But he was one of those big stars in the Italian game. And we knew about his struggles. He also was one of the, the, I mean, when he moved to England, he was basically, this was a mega transfer. He was one of the biggest stars. He is also at the forefront of converting the Premier League into a better league, where suddenly uh, really top players, it did not happen that from Italy, they were the best league at, at the moment, that a star from Serie A goes to the Premier League. Those were all great. Grimm was showing uh, the dedication. He was always a hard worker. This was also part of his uh, personality. But I just, I just remember him in the Juve shirt, you know, lift, lifting a trophy or uh, playing in the Champions League uh, that season. I did see too little of him with Sampdoria. But simply the fact, you know, <laughs> the first uh, Serie A title that I was aware of was handed out was to some some to it. So to me, this was not a sensation. I mean, this only came afterwards that him and Mancini carrying Sampdoria to glory and then uh, even to a European Cup final. Sampdoria is a small club in the big scheme of things. They almost won it all. And the one thing I'm honestly really sad to hear about his passing but the one thing that makes it feel a little bit better is that he had a role uh together with his buddy mancini that he could actually win the euros as a staff member with italy this was such a beautiful win not only because italy won it but because the sampdoria gang got back together there was attilio lombardo in there they got back together and they won the title and so yeah Rest in peace, uh, Luca Vialli. 
you were a special player, you were a star of my early years. And yes, you did not play for Milan, but I always had the deepest respect for you. Okay, after this short tribute, let's look back at the Serie A round that we had at the weekend, which started with Fiorentina getting a 2-1 win at Sassolo, putting Sassolo in a little bit of more trouble. Juve get another win, well, another 1-0 win, I'm uh, tempted to say, because they have now eight in a row and have not conceded a goal. And suddenly a Juventus team that was the laughingstock after the loss to Monza are suddenly very much again in the title mix, playing Allegri ball in its finest degree. They're not in any way fancy or exciting to watch. They're actually horrendous to watch, but they get the job done. And, you know, I always said it. This combination of Allegri and Juve, once he sorted out the problems that Juve had been building up, and despite all the rumblings behind the scenes, this Juve side is really, really dangerous at the moment, and we will learn a lot about them tonight, uh, how good they really are. They get the winner through Danilo, where Federico Chiesa has actually quite a bright moment. Um, and another win, 1-0. And I don't know why they keep playing in weird jerseys at home. That's maybe a, a bone of contention with me. But you were, are for real at the moment. Can they keep kicking keep it up? Because I had a similar feeling last season at one point and then they fell, they fell away. I'm slightly hoping it's still the case. But this US uh, team is too talented and makes me slightly nervous. Uh, Inter always makes me nervous because I think they are the most talented squad. But they just lack something and, you know, uh, getting too emotional, throwing stuff away. They always have this kind of combustible energy around them. And it was the same thing here when they played at Monza uh, with Galliani, of course. Uh, but let's call him Galliani, former Milan uh, leaders, being now the big man at Monza. So this must have felt really sweet to get a draw. But it was a really weird one because uh, Darmian gives uh, into a lead, then uh, Juria can equal us shortly thereafter. I mean, within a minute. So, um, and Monza actually was really well into the game, but it's Lautaro who gives Inter again the lead. And then uh, chances missed on both sides. Monza really pushing for that equalizer, and it comes late through Dumfries' own goal. Um, big one right there for Monza. And uh, I think finally Monza is finding a rhythm where you think, yeah, they might as well stay up in the league. And let's see where this goes from here. Um, Torino 1-1, one, one. Lazio also throwing away a 2-0 lead. Uh, both goals scored in the second half, but Empoli uh, equalizes late. And Lazio having a relatively rotten start to the uh, new year with losing to Lecce after 1-0 lead. Now only playing 2-2 against Empoli at home after having a 2-2 lead. Ah, this is not going to go well. Lecce, meanwhile, plays a 1-1 one, one at Spezia. Um, Sampdoria against Napoli was all about Gianluca Vialli. Um, however, I think the emotion got to Sampdoria also. I mean, the fans were chanting uh, the, the, all the accolades that they have been singing for uh, Vialli already in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, that they love him. We always love, love, love him, and he's better than Pelé. All those kind of, kind of things. But the game... All in the first half went against them. I mean, uh, there was a penalty given that Politano misses. Uh, then an Osiman uh, goal gives Napoli the lead. Um, Rincon is then sent off with a red card. And then again, another penalty is given away that Elmas converts. But Napoli also deserved to win. They were overall the more mature team in that game. But again, uh, you know, the um, kind of sentimental uh, part of me really wanted some Sampdoria to get something to remember. Not only Viali, we also have not talked about Sinisa Mihailovic, who also was a big part of those Sampdoria teams, then uh, of the Lazio teams, and especially Bologna. So uh, they were, it was a week end of real morning, or a week of morning in a way. What can I tell you about Milan Roma? Uh, robbery. It was absolute robbery. Milan controlled the game left and right. With not being really that committed, but Roma showed nothing. They let Milan have the ball, let them play, did not do anything. Anything. The game was actually rather, rather, rather boring until Kaludo made it 1-0. And even at that 1-0, the entirety of the game, 
I felt this is such a safe lead because there's nothing of Roma coming. Even when the commentator said is that the Roma are getting a little bit back, uh, back better in the game, I didn't. I literally didn't see it because as soon as Milan had 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 the ball, there was some. There was four times as much danger there than whenever Roma had the ball. The only thing that Roma was dangerous for are dead ball situations. But then uh, even Pioli made the changes. Okay. Uh, we want to defend a little bit, let's, let's get a little bit more physical, let's put Pobega in, let's put Asta Franks in for Benazer, but that might actually have broken the game, because Benazer, who at least signed a contract, uh, car contract was re really good, but as soon as Leao makes uh, assist Pobega to the 2-0, uh, the, the game was done. There was no way, it was actually looking more, this Cup, 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 3 now, Giroud really trying to get another goal, uh, how they got back is just beyond me. This was really a robbery. I mean, uh, Ibanez from a Pellegrini corner. Okay, yes, can happen. And especially with a goalkeeper, a uh, reserve goal, goalkeeper back there, where you always know that he's not the commanding of the box. And then uh, Franks gives away the freak and Hemi Abraham converts that one. It, it was just, I mean, I, I'm not saying it's down to Tata Rujano, but I feel that the defenders need to work a little bit harder with him in goal. He gets the equalizer at the point. It was so not deserved. It was so not deserved. It, it, it was a really gut-wrenching blow. I usually, at this part of the season, I am usually rather uh, cool about things if I see that every, everything's working well. But this was a draw that was not deserved. That is all I can say. And I hope Milan take heart from that and show a performance going forward. Then we had two Monday month games with Ellers uh, beating Cremonese. Also, Cremonese, of course, paying respect to Gianluca Grugviali. Verona getting a much needed win. And then another tribute, Bologna Mihailovic, of course. Um, they take an early through Orsolini in their light pink fourth jersey. I know I will be working rather soon on a Serie A jersey review, probably this week, we weekend already. Um, so that was interesting. But then in the second half, Atalanta, who had shown nothing in the first half, turned it egg, actually in very short succession through Kopmeyers and uh, Rasmus Hoylund, who came from Sturm Graz, um, turned the game, came around with Jeremy Boga assisting both of these and also setting Atalanta on a good track. So, in Serie A, we have now the following standings. Napoli can again decent themselves a little bit uh, away from Milan. It's now Juve and Milan level on points. And yes, head-to-head -head counts, but only the second part of the season. So Juve at the moment is ahead of Milan, which hurts because Milan beat them 2-0 and Juve were nowhere. Okay, <laughs> enough of that. The season is long and it might well, well be that Milan lose actually a little bit more ground. And it's also more the, the more damage because Inter lost points as well. So you could have kept really put a little bit more distance between yourself and Inter, which I think is the team that I fear a teeny bit more when it comes um, to, you know, finishing second. I mean, it really feels that Juve, Milan, Inter, and Napoli are now the teams that are the top four teams yeah, it is this year because I don't see Lazio, Atalanta, or Roma really breaking in, especially not Roma with the little they have shown. They have definitely um, taken a step back. They, this is a team that does not look right and that the fan base is still behind Mourinho is a little bit uh, weird, weird to me. Especially under Fonseca, they played such scintillating football at times and now they play such a dreck and the fans are still behind it. I just don't get it. On the bottom, the win catapults Verona a little bit up, but still the last three have already a big hill to climb. The only question is if Spezia are just good enough or, you know, is there a surprise escape like we had last season uh, with Salernitana. Uh, in the expected standings, it's exactly those three. Uh, Ella, Sampdoria and Cremonese going down, which again would hurt because my collection <laughs> I would lose another two teams from my Serie A teams from my, my collection. It actually, I was very proud of my Serie A collection even two years ago. And now it seems like I actually need to collect a few more Serie A teams this year, which was not necessary in the plans, but I guess it gotta be this way. Upcoming games tonight, huge one. 1v2, Napoli, Juventus. Ah, this will tell us a whole lot. Then on Saturday, the two teams that will play in the weird Supercoppa that I will not cover, even if even it's, it's Derby de della Malonini, I don't recognize a competition that is played in Saudi Arabia. Milan play Inter. 
Uh, Milan have to go away to Lecce, which is a really tough road trip. Um, and Inter at home to Ellas, I think, will be an easy win. But I thought also that Inter will go to Monza and get an easy win. We also have a really uh, traditional duel with Rome and Fiorentina, although I don't expect it to be a great game, to be honest with you. But we also have to talk about the cup action. Um, Gianluigi Buffon. <laughs> Comes with Parma to the San Siro make, at the age of 44, makes a few couple of uh, great saves. Um, Parma actually take, can you believe it, a really brilliant goal through Juric in the third, 38th, and they almost complete it. However, Lautaro Martinez gets the equalizer in the 88th, and then a really odd goal by Acerbi wins it for Inter. At that point, I thought, yeah. <laughs> I just hope that Milan will not play overtime. Now, of course, they play over all overtime. Uh, Torino was maybe even better in the first few, 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 few minutes, playing a much more better squad uh, than Milan. Milan, uh, it was lackluster. It was a second string, almost a second string squad, uh, where only Tonali, who was the captain on the day, showed a little bit. Um, the Catalare really unlucky hitting the post uh, once and missing a few chances here, 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 there. But I thought that Milan overall had a control of the game, especially when Gigi got sent off with a second yellow. And then they bring on the cavalry with Leao, with uh, Junior Masia, Giroud, Hernandez, and Benacer coming all on. So now we're playing with a proper team. And they cannot break down Torino. Yes, they have chances and miss quite a few chances. Um, but you also, I, I've, as much as they were trying, I always felt that you know the, the extra effort was missing. That was maybe the one thing. Um, and then in overtime, uh, Adopo, who had come, uh, come on, uh, and bye bye. Uh, Run a count contact at Adopo, uh, Conquer Converts, and those were really bye bye. Had played in the fifth French league not too long. Adopo were in the third Italian league. 140th minute, they get the 1 0 for to Torino. A little bit gut wrenching that loss because, again, uh, it was not necessary. On the other side, I'm thinking, okay, yes, you're out of the cup, but it's the least important uh, competition, and in a way, not having a full program now with all the injuries that Milan have, maybe that's another thing. But we also have to talk to injuries. I think they need to fire the medical staff and order new and order new people there or get new people not order. Then yesterday, Fiorentina win against Sampdoria, uh, one nil overall uh, deserved. Under Barak getting the goal, then lay they don't even a red card. And Roma having making much harder work than necessary of Genoa, who actually had also few chances. Of course, Roma were a better one, but a brilliant winner by Dybala uh, around the same uh, mid, mid midway through the sex I could have. It was a really really good one uh, there as well. But as I said, Roma just doesn't look right overall. But we gotta see. How Italy. I probably have lost my interest in the Coppa Italia, but that's not a bad, bad thing. I, I, I still will watch if, if there's something good happening, uh, although it's never the nicest cup competition. But uh, as much as I hate the format of the Coppa Italia, at least you always get a good, you, you tend to get really good games come the semi final. That's at least something that, yeah, okay, this holds the interest, but I would wish that it would have more like an England, even a Spanish style format there. In any case, I would like to know what you thought about what's happening in Serie A, who will win the big clash tonight, although I have, if you have a feeling this has draw written all over it, give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel and see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!